welcome to Conquering Mount Scrapmore with Brenda. I'm Brenda and we're here with another episode of YC Wednesdays. Yes, I love YC Wednesdays. I've got such a beautiful block today. It's called Adam's Refuge and it's just one of these blocks that's very vintage and you could do it really scrappy and we just had so much fun, you know, looking for fabric and cutting it up and I thought, okay, we'll make it a large size so it's easier to work with but and sew it on the sewing machine. But first, now the PDFs, there's two of them because it's a two pager, are going to be in the show notes below. So you've got to get into the show notes. It's so important you get into them now because everything I'm talking about now in this next little bit, are, there's going to be links and all sorts of things in those show notes. But first, let's do our shout out. Our shout out is Penny at Quilt, no, Cabin Quilters. Penny at Cabin Quilters. Now she doesn't know this is coming, the shout out is coming. And I've been a subscriber of hers for a while. So it's kind of a surprise for her. So go give her some encouragement and love and tell her that Brenda from Conquering Mount Scrapmore sent you. Go check her out. It's, you know, it's, it's another fun YouTube channel to go check out and, you know, get some fun quilting ideas from. Now, I want to talk about our Zoom sew dates. Our Zoom sew dates are in the show notes below. And it's uh, from now until the end of December. We've made that commitment to you. We're going to be there on those so dates. Now, it's from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Mountain Standard Time because I'm usually in Alberta, Canada, or I'm in my little home in Arizona through the winter. And those so dates are fun. We have a blast in there. And it's just one of those, those things that we can do for you and have everybody in, that's watching the YouTube channel can come to those so dates, right? I mean, we just, we try and talk to everybody and we try and figure out what they were working on and trying to talk to them about what they're working on or what's inspiring them. It's all good. And if you come that so date, and you don't feel like sewing, you can bring your crocheting or your knitting. It's all fine. It's a great place to come hang out. You know, it's wonderful. Now, I do speak for free to quilting groups and quilting gills. We've been doing that as part of my giving back to the, the quilting community. Now, my talk, I do a uh, Zoom presentation and I talk about uh, using your scraps. I talk about elements of design and I do a little mini uh, trunk show with pictures. And then I tell you what's coming up on our YouTube channel. So kind of you get a sneak peek as to what's to come, right? So it's, you know, it's like, oh, we get to see that before everybody else does. So, you know, it's kind of cool that way. And we have some fun ideas too, right? Um, I haven't done any like, in. I've done like one in person uh, and it was very local and it wasn't, it wasn't that far, but I can't do, I can't get on an airplane and fly to your group and, you know, and talk. So I just want you to know that it's over Zoom and this is how I'm doing it. Um, the Community Round Robin might still be down there and uh, Michelle from Bits and Pieces is hosting. It was wonderful working with Michelle and Future Cat from New Zealand. Kelly from Kelly's Quilts and Cruises. We had so much fun making those blocks and those blocks are coming out. They're just gorgeous. What you guys are doing with the color palettes and how you're making it your own. I am so proud that you guys are joining along on this little uh, journey doing this round robin with us. It's been wonderful. Now, speaking as well as which, we've got the Facebook group growing rapidly, having all sorts of fun in there. There's all sorts of community chats, but the most important one, I think, sometimes, is the, the virtual sewing room we've set up in Discord. Now, that's really important to go check out that because you never know who you're going to sew with. You never know who you're going to meet or what country they're from. And eventually, these people are actually making friends with each other, you know. So it's kind of like it's, you know, your own 24 hour, seven day a week, you know, like sewing date that you're part of. It's just been so much fun. Uh, it's, uh, yeah, so I think that's it. That's all. That's all I'm going to mention today. So come on in. Let's get the sewing. This is Adam's Refuge, and I think it's from the 1930s. So come on in. Okay, we're at the sewing machine. You gotta get your two pages. There's two PDFs for this one. This is two pages. And you made your your templates. I mean, this. What I did is I took my templates on my fabric and I drew around them. Then I cut, right? Then I'm not changing the size of my template. But some people, what they do is they try and use this as a template and it doesn't work, right? So, because they cut into it and it's not thick enough for you to be using with your rotary cutter. So anyway, so here we are with our our lovely little Adams refuge. Oh, I just had to laugh when I saw this. I was just, 
This fabric is adorable. I think it's a Robert Kaufman. It's just so cute. Oh my goodness, it's cute. Now, what I would do here is I would sew these pieces on here first, you know, diagonally opposite, or, um, you know, it's it's kind of up to you how you want to how how you want to approach this. You could sew these two first. I mean, that also works, right? I mean, it's you know, it's kind of that corner to corner thing. Let's try that. It wouldn't matter. You're sewing the the large one to the large side because again, this is an uneven octagon that we're working with. We haven't given you anything yet with an even octagon, so you're going to just put that through very gently and massage it into place and there and you're going to get those two biases together now this is the other one I'm going to sew on but in the meantime I could sew this together too right so I'm just going to sew quickly sew that together Okay, and press out. Yeah, you always want to sew the bias first, the bias edges first of your center block. That always makes it easier. And now we're gonna do this, and we're just gonna get right in the middle. Yes, oh, we got it. Line it up, and you're just barely seeing purple on either side of this. Right, so that's kind of important to keep in mind. Okay, and now I gotta take the other one of this and just sew that together. Okay, there. Mm -hmm. There. Okay. And now with the other side, you're going to go like this. It looks strange, but it works. Okay. There we go. Now. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> okay. There. Now. I'm going to press this seam open because that's important. There. This is such a, I just think that's such a cute print. Okay, now let's get the other side of this on here, just like so. And. I guess this is what they call a composite Y seam, but it works. So now, basically I've got this and I've got this. So now in two seams, right, I'm gonna have one here and one here, I'm gonna have a block done, right? You can see that, but this is a composite Y seam. So I want to make sure I press open all of these. Cause that's good <laughs> that's gonna create some issues so I want this pressed open oh, come on oh, the fingers don't work some days and there just like that now I suppose I could take this to the iron as well that be careful when you're pressing this open you don't want to stretch this too much because when you sew two biases together, you stabilize it kind of, but not fully. So it's not really stabilized and don't pull, like don't pull here. Cause that's still a bias. You know, this is a straight of grain and this is straight. All of this outside is straight of grain. Now I'm going to go like this first. So I'm going to draw, where did my pen go? Because I've got a, a, a blind Y seam here, I'm just gonna draw in a quarter inch on both directions, mark it with an X, and that's where I'm gonna do this side too. While we're here, 
and a quarter inch both directions we're good okay so now I'm going to take a pin and I'm going to put it through here and then I'm going to pin down one quarter inch on my seam below and I'm just going to maneuver this so it's like that there so I can match this up so nicely there just like that so now I've got this under and I want to make sure that it goes it presses open yes it is because that will help okay boom I'm gonna lift this up just a hair just to make sure it lies nice and flat then I can even see my X coming up there we go and just hold it there we go now I'm going to turn it so I get my next row done okay here we go and now this sometimes it just needs a little bit of persuading you know just to get this all here and in in place yes it does there we go so now I'm going to sew right to where that seam is now if I have to lift my plow I can just so my fabric all falls under and bang with my needle down I'm pivoting right because that puts me in the right exactly perfect spot I need to be okay now we're going to get this all figured out there we go and there I'm gonna and drop this down here just like so okay okay there get that okay so we're gonna march up slowly and I need just half a stitch so I'm holding it there we go and now I'm going to turn this pivot this and I'm heading towards my X where is this my X on my fabric and I'm going to put a pin in here just because I can it's nice and handy go quarter inch down and that's where those seams are supposed to match okay and all of a sudden it does nothing <laughs> okay all right there we go nice come on nice and neat let's go yeah okay perfect all of a sudden you fiddled you fiddled around with it long enough and it decided to do what you wanted it to do okay last seam okay and we pivot just a bit and we get all of this out of the way and it lies nice and flat there we go we got the bias on the bottom on the purple okay so here we are so that worked beautifully no puckers i got a bit of thread but that's okay so that's what it's going to look like now let's get this one done we're going to do the same thing same thing we're going to mark our x's on the other side right our quarter inch and you like i say you can use a ruler if you want i probably draw quarter inch lines in my in my sleep <laughs> it's like yeah that's like one of those things okay so i'm going to put get this a little closer here and i'm going to put uh, right in the middle of my x again and quarter inch down from the seam right in that seam that's where you need to be and there we go there now we're just gonna run this under there we go so yeah, i'm trying to show you that you can do a combination of things to make y seam there's different tactics depending on where you are in your Y seam. Okay, just there we go. Perfect. Right on the spot where I need to be. Put that there. Now I'm going to pivot. Yeah, because the more ways you know how to do something, 
the easier the task becomes, right? And I mean, that's so true in quilting. And I just want to make sure everything flat. This is in the right spot. Yes, it is. Okay. There. There we go. And one stitch. There we go. And. Here, nice, oops, Where, what is going on? Huh? Every once in a while we have one that just, I don't want to. <laughs> it's like, I don't want to lie that way. Yeah, I won't. It's okay, it works. It usually works pretty good. Y seams, once, once you master the Y seams, there's a lot of blocks that are just so easy. There's a lot of quilt patterns all of a sudden that you can manage. Okay, now we get back to the marking your X, right? So we want to take that X and we want to put it in the center and then a quarter inch down, right? And we want to just pin it in place. Ooh, and everything's lying nice and flat. Oh my goodness. Quick, go and buy a lotto. A lotto ticket now. There. Yeah, it's just half an inch there. Okay. Now, last bit. Doesn't take as long as we thought it would take. And why is that? Why is that going that way? Okay. Come on. There. There you go. You shouldn't have to struggle to put these together. And sometimes... It's just, you know, a matter of getting it to lie. This is not lying flat. There it is. There. That's what's going on. Okay. And some, it doesn't take long to get these together. You shouldn't have to struggle with it. And if you have to struggle with it, don't sew it. Just keep, you know, trying to wiggle it around so all of a sudden it'll go into place. And it might get caught on your face plate below. So this is what I did for... The ironing plan, I guess, is what you'd call it. I when, when I go to iron, I'm going to press them all open, right? I mean, that's the easiest way to do it. Now, what some people do on this block is they cheat. And they make that outer edge just a bit bigger. We're talking like a quarter of an inch. That's it. That's all they're doing is making adding a quarter of an inch to this outside edge. And, you know, just so you have to, so you can trim down to... 12 and a half inches unfinished, right? So that's kind of a built-in cheat. I mean, I'll leave it up to you whether you want to do that or not. Just if you were doing a lot of these, it would be easier. Now you are going to get some very cool secondary patterns forming when you do put this together in a quilt, right? Because all of the side pieces here, this side piece would match up to the side piece with the other block, right? And these would also form different things. So I'm just going to give it a quick finger press to open up all the stuff here on the edge and away we go. So let's get to our, I'm going to give it a good flattening with a clapper and we're done. We'll get to our ta-da moment. So here's our Adam's Refuge. I think it's adorable. I just, I found that uh, apron print from Robert Kaufman. I thought, oh, I have to use this one up. It's It's got to be foot good. Now, this is a great scrap buster, but this also gives you lots of secondary patterns, this block, right? So when you put them, you know, side by side, there's a lot of really cool, interesting patterns that come out of here like you have a cross with the the corner pieces come out and you have an octo like an elongated hexi like kind of a squished hexi on with these pieces and it's a lot to look at and a lot of fun so i do hope you give it a try whether you decide you're going to go with hand piecing or sewing machine you can be done with sewing machine um I did not put a little cheat on here to make this outer edge a little bit bigger. So this one did finish at 12 and a half or it unfinished 12 and a half. It will finish at 12 in a quilt. So if you are kind of like, gee, let's put a little cheat on there just in case something goes awry and then we can trim it down to, to the right size, you're more than welcome to do that. Just make sure you do it on both pieces, right? And this piece is two sides you're doing it on. So 
I hope you have an absolutely fabulous week ahead and life is treating you gently and your sewing room is all full with lovely fabrics and soft silky threads and you know life is just grand. Okay, you take care until we meet each other again. Okay, bye! Hello again, we just want to thank you for enjoying our video and you know coming along with my husband and my YouTube adventure and quilting and you know sometimes things don't work out as as best they should and sometimes they work out great we're going wow that went well <laughs> but it's been a, an amazing journey and I'm so glad I could share it with you share like and subscribe these videos that really helps us out and it helps us make more charity quilts okay so you guys take care until we have a chance to meet again okay bye